So you might be familiar with the concept of tortoise shell cats, which are female cats that have a particular blotchy orange and black mottled look on their fur. And the reason that that process happens is that X chromosome inactivation, abbreviated XCI, has occurred. And this is a situation where, for example, in a tortoise salt shell cat, on their X chromosomes, there's a gene called the orange gene, and there could be two alleles with a lowercase o and an uppercase o, where the wild type produces an orange pigment, and the other version with the lowercase o doesn't produce orange pigment, it produces black pigment. And so depending on which of these two alleles is active in a particular part of a cat's body, that part of the cat will develop either black fur or orange fur. Now, because I can't draw cats very well, I'm going to focus on mice instead. But we need to start by talking about the process of development and what happens during development. So if you think of a single cell that's just been fertilized and it's got two copies of the X chromosome, what's going to happen during development is that cell will divide and you'll have a two cell embryo, each of which has two copies of that X chromosome. Each of those cells will divide. You get a four cell embryo. Each of those cells divide. You get an eight cell embryo with some that you can see there behind like that. And at some point during early development, while this process continues, each of these cells in mammals and in many other species will randomly turn off one copy of their X chromosome. And they do that by heterochromatinizing the X chromosome. We've talked about that before. You can watch another video to learn about heterochromatin and euchromatin. But what this essentially means is that one of those two X chromosomes gets turned off by compressing the DNA into such a tightly packed molecule of chromatin, DNA plus the proteins that organize the DNA, that no transcription can ever occur from that heterochromatinized X chromosome, which is also called a bar body. And this is a process that's exclusive to females. And the reason that this happens in females in mammals is because females have two X chromosomes and males have only one X chromosome and then a Y. And there's a problem here because our bodies are either used to having one copy of X chromosome genes or two copies. So you could think of two different ways that this problem could be solved. For example, if a body was expecting to have two copies of every gene on the X chromosome and twice the gene dosage, maybe twice the level of transcription, males would have a real difficulty surviving because we've only got one X chromosome that would produce half as much gene product as our bodies would be expecting. Through the process of evolution in mammals, the solution was, instead of turning up the transcription of the X chromosome, which happens in some organisms with XY sex determination, the idea, not that this was a conscious idea, through evolution was every female would simply turn off one of her X chromosomes and that makes the number of X chromosomes between males and females essentially equal. So at a point during development, early in development, each female cell again will turn off one of the two X chromosomes and this process is thought to be random. So if you have a diploid organism, at the eight cell stage if we assume that that's the stage at which sex X chromosome inactivation is occurring, you could imagine that if you had a cat in this case with the little O and the big O alleles, you might have some cells turn off the X chromosome that's got the little O. So that's going to be a capital O. You might have some cells that randomly turn off the big O allele. So you get X chromosomes that have the active version of the X chromosome containing the little O gene. And after development concludes, then you might have a cat or a rat or a mouse or whatever that has blotches. So now I'm going to focus on, let's do a mouse. Okay. So if sex chromosome inactivation, X chromosome inactivation occurs at the eight cell stage, 
then you'd expect roughly eight different patches on the coat of this mouse to have either the orange or black pigmentation. So you might have something that looks like that. One, two, three patches, four patches, five patches, six patches, seven patches, and maybe one ear. And the locations of the patches simply has to do with which parts of the body each of these cells at the eight cell stage develop into throughout the life of the organism and during development. But this pattern then reflects the fact that individual progenitor cells of each of those parts of the somatic tissue, the body, those randomly inactivated one or the other X chromosome. And that's how we have evidence that X chromosome inactivation occurs. Another way to think about this and a practical use of this information is that depending on the size or the number of patches on the body of a female, you can tell at what cell stage approximately X chromosome inactivation occurs. For example, if you had a mouse that has these sorts of patterns, so you get one patch that's expressing the gene from one copy of the X chromosome, and the other half of the body is expressing the allele on the other X chromosome, well, that suggests that it was at the two cell stage where one X chromosome was randomly inactivated in one cell type and the other X was inactivated in the other cell at the two cell stage. So that's the process of X chromosome inactivation. It's random inactivation at a point during early development in female mammals that turns off either one X chromosome or the other, and that's a process that's dependent on heterochromatinization, condensing the DNA so that it can't be transcribed.